This is the schmo with the pro, with the viral sensation, the YouTuber, the pro boxer, Jake Paul, giving the schmo a last opportunity to chat with you before the fight. The schmo zone quickies. How we doing? I'm doing good, man. This is fun. This is <laughs> it's crazy. I got my friends here, my team here. Everyone's just chilling, vibing, listening to the music on the way here. We saw a billboard around randomly of me up in the city of Atlanta. People are sending me pictures of billboards of me across the world. I mean, who would have thought the Ohio kid, the landscaping $10 an hour kid would be here. Now, 48 hours from the biggest fight of your life. And you've been doing a lot of training. Coach BJ Flores, he's putting you in with the Sharks. Of all the MMA guys you've sparred with, who's given you the most challenges this far in your boxing career? Um, I would say the none of the above. Uh, I would say the boxing, the, the, the world champ boxers that I've gone against have been the sharpest um, and, and the, the hardest to deal with in sparring, uh, like Jean Pascal and Andrew Tabidi. Uh, both, both of those guys were lasers, man, uh, but it was good work. Yesterday, it was the open workouts. I'm sure you've seen the footage of Ben Askren hit in the mitts. What's your overall thoughts of Ben Askren's striking capabilities after seeing that footage? I think he's very square, uh, has too much weight on his front foot, and uh, <laughs> doesn't punch like a pro. Uh, he, he, he's a mitt warrior is what it looks like. And I, I call them mitt warriors because they look good on the mitts and their coach has the mitt and like is smacking their punches, smacking their punches. The guy's not even punching. It's actually the coach hitting. Um, so I call them mitt warriors. You seem to be getting stretched out quite well over there during your open workout session. It looked pretty cool, man. How loose do you feel after getting stretched out like that? <laughs> uh, Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Quick break from our programming to let you know that today's content is brought to you by Fusion CBD Products. We have our intense relief rub right here. Not all of you may have easy going joints. You use this, there's a thousand milligrams per jar. Put it on those joints and achy muscles. Check out Fusion CBD Products for all your CBD needs. Use the promo code SHMO and get 20% off. Now, let's get back to the interview. I, I feel pretty loose. I mean, that's something we do on a day-to-day -day basis. Flexibility equals speed. Um, and so I'm constantly improving my, my flexibility. There was a heavyweight boxer by the name of Donovan Razor Ruddick. He fought Mike Tyson twice. He fought Lennox Lewis. He had this very unorthodox punch. He called it the smash. He used a left hook and a combination with an uppercut. Do you anticipate anything kind of funky from Ben Askren like that when you guys go up against each other Saturday evening? Uh, for sure. I think he's going to be really awkward. I think he's going to be coming with some rabbit punches and some weird angles and uh, just random shit. Honestly, he likes the overhand, right? Uh, so, uh, you know, but look, I'm ready for all of that. And I was fighting, uh, uh, these sort of green amateur guys for all of my fights so far. So Nate Robinson was doing the same thing. He was switching to Southpaw like every five seconds. And I'm like, what the fuck are you doing, bro? <laughs> so I'm used to the, the, the weird punches and the, the awkwardness. If you do not get the KO that you're anticipating within the first few rounds, how confident do you feel that you will outpoint this guy? And will you feel good about that if this thing ends up going to the decision to the judges? Yeah, no, a hundred percent. I will outpoint him every single round. And we're taking this round by round, obviously hoping for the early KO. I'm manifesting the early KO. Um, but I think it'd be great to get that experience under my belt as a pro fighter to, to go more rounds, you know, and be under the lights for a longer, a longer period of time. That's only going to help me in future fights. Um, but this guy's, this guy's a zombie walking forward and Saturday will just be about how many bullets this guy can take. What's your overall opinion on the system of boxing? I know you've chopped it up with the Ryan Garcia's, the Canelo Alvarez's, but what I think you've noticed is sometimes the best fighters don't fight the best fighters. If the best fighters really were going to fight the best fighters, the Terrence Crawfords would have fought their Errol Spence juniors already in that welterweight division. Ultimately, what is Jake Paul's take on the system of boxing? Well, I just think there's too many uh, people involved from promoters to uh just managers and 
you know, the, the fighters don't actually get the fights that they want. Um, it's, it's this sort of controlled sport, which is why I think there should be one division, one champion in each weight class. Uh, and I know Eddie Hearn's working on that. Um, you know, as I become more influential in, in, in the sport of boxing, I plan on working towards that as well. It just makes more sense. And there should be a league where uh, there's a there's a sort of Dana White figure that makes people fight because boxing needs it. Dana White's talked about dabbling into boxing and doing Zufa boxing. Maybe that's something that we can talk about one day, this unified boxing league. Is that what you're alluding to? Yeah, for sure. That'd be, that'd be fire. There's a lot of great gambling opportunities on your fight. I'm sure you might've seen some of these prop bets. Who's going to bleed first and stuff like that of all the bets that are going to be made on this bout Saturday evening. Is there one that stands out to you, Jake Paul? Um, I haven't, I haven't seen the prop bets to be honest. Uh, (laughs) I can only imagine what the people are putting up on the internet. How about the large sums of money? Well, I mean, if anyone's smart, they're betting their house on me to beat Ben, you know, especially because the odds are, are, are pretty close. I think on even on some sites, they have me as the underdog. So s- some people who are Jake Paul fans are going to get rich. Any pre-fight ritual? Are you going to start a new ritual? You've been refraining from whoopee. What? <laughs> uh <laughs> Well, I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> Pre-fight rituals heading into this bout. As I mean, listen, man, you're two and zero already. Three and zero. Oh, count the fight oh, with the head sex. Oh, got it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I have a lot of pre-fight rituals, but it, we, I sort of do the same routine that for the fights that I do every day in sparring. So my body's just used to that. He's an Ohio kid. He's Jake Paul looking to make some noise. Can we get a final message for all your fans out there worldwide? Thank you guys for the support this far. You know, it's been a crazy week. And, you know, our, our fan base is sort of used to this. Um, but I'm going out there and I'm fighting for you guys, my friends, my family. And I promise to bring back home the W. And uh, this is just the start of an amazing journey. And I say that every single year. And it holds true every single year so this is the start of something special and uh hop on the train or or get out of the way it all goes down in the big atl april 17th we are 48 hours away he's the pro jake paul i'm the schmo the schmo zone quickies we are out